I'm Jennifer Delacuadri, and this is the Raising Happy Teens podcast, where you learn how to successfully guide your teenager into adulthood without losing your sanity in the process. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast. I was having kind of fun thinking of what to say on this podcast because I'm going to be talking about people pleasing, but specifically people pleasing as a parent. And I love that I have to say people pleasing as a parent, like the triple P. Maybe I should just name this podcast the triple P. (laughs) So I was having kind of a, a fun time thinking about this, how many times I would be saying people pleasing. So if you are looking for a fun game to play, that would be to do something every time I say people pleasing and go. (laughs) Let's just start off by saying here, I myself am a recovering people pleaser. I did not realize that that's what was going on. I thought I was just being nice. Um, But then I realized I'm saying yes to too many things and it really did take a toll on my energy, my ability to effectively parent. I didn't really realize it either until I was a parent. And so I'm speaking to you about this topic as a recovering people pleaser. And another reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I recently watched the movie the Woman of the Hour, on Netflix. And so if you haven't watched it, if you like to watch these types of films, I highly recommend going to watch it. I'm not going to give anything away here, but there were periods of time in the show where I found myself getting upset because the main one of the main characters, Anna Kendrick's character, it was set in the 70s, and she was having to do things or be certain ways because she didn't want to ruffle feathers. And that was just the norm back then. I was born in the 70s, so I remember this. And talking, the the person who was hosting the show she was on was talking about how she looked so pretty and isn't she so pretty? And like, look at her, she we need to show off her trim figure. And yes, that's not necessarily people pleasing, but in my mind, it kind of is because If you are changing the way you look so that other people will like you better, that's people pleasing. If you're changing the way you act or how you think, that's people pleasing. And so when I watched this movie, I was like, I need to talk about this because as women specifically, and I'm going to get into this later in the podcast, but as women specifically, we so often have been conditioned to be nice, to be friendly, to be accommodating, to be helpful. And when we're not being that way or when we feel like we're not, it's uncomfortable and it feels like we're doing something wrong or we don't want to disappoint. And also I feel like as empaths, a lot of us are empaths or uh, just a little more sensitive to the needs of others and just feeling like, uh, gosh, I might be letting this person down feels really uncomfortable. And so we may over accommodate by saying yes to too many things because we don't want to put someone else out. So all that to say, this whole podcast is going to be about the tendency to people please. Yes, I know anyone can be a people pleaser. It doesn't mean that you're a woman. And But I am going to have a spin here on how it impacts your relationship with your teenager and your ability to parent effectively. So I'll talk a little bit about traits or tendencies of people who are people pleasers. And I will talk a little bit about why we become people pleasers. And then I will share with you, of course, what to do if you recognize you're being a little bit too much of a pleaser as a parent. So let me dive in. I'm going to start by just lifting, listing some of the traits of a people pleaser. So what I want you to do while you're listening to this is just think, when in my life do I act this way? And when as a parent do I act this way? And so it's kind of like a little survey. Do I do this? Do I not do this? And while you're doing that, I also want you to pay attention to how it feels to recognize if you do see that you are doing that. How does it feel to you to acknowledge that? So if it feels good, it may not be a problem, but if you're hearing it and you're like, yeah, I do that, 
and it doesn't feel good, then you'll definitely want to stick around because I have some recommendations for how to reduce the impact of it. So a people pleaser typically, they accommodate other people's needs above their own needs. And they're typically go with the flow, but the flow is dictated by other people, not by them. They're not just like, oh, whatever is fine. They're like, oh, whatever you say is fine. And what I have to say or what I think doesn't really count in this situation. And they're typically just really agreeable in general. Like, it's fine. No problem. Yes, it's good. And I want you to also think like, who in my life do I know like this? Because I know we all know people like this. And it can be triggering sometimes to, to be around someone like that because it's like, we'll get a backbone. But just know that there's a tendency and there's a reason why this happens and also compassion. Typically, people pleasers will not assert themselves in situations. They rarely say no, if ever. They feel valuable when they're complying with other people. And they really value praise from others. Another really sure sign is over-apologizing, just saying sorry a lot. I had a friend in college who would say sorry so much that it wasn't even that she was apologizing. It was like a word that she would say as a filler, like, sorry, 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 until the point where, and this was in college, this was before I knew anything about people pleasing, but I was like, you don't have to tell me sorry. And it was like a challenge that I would give her. <laughs> Maybe that was like my early coaching days, a challenge I would give her. Let's see if we can go like a whole hour without you saying sorry. <laughs> And sometimes she could do it. Most of the time she could. Anyway, back to the topic. Typically people who are people pleasers, they have a low self-worth. And sometimes they may take the blame for things when it's not their fault. Or they'll make excuses for the fault of others. Like, I'm so sorry they're like that. Or accommodating for somebody else in their life who they feel like they need to apologize for. And oftentimes... People pleasers have little self-awareness. Like they don't recognize that they're doing that. They think, gosh, you know, I'm just being nice. But they don't really, they're not really aware that their tendency is to do that. And essentially, it's all in an effort to seek approval or validation from others. So that can show up in parenting like, oh, you're such a nice parent. You always say yes. Or you'll always pack my lunch even though you're so busy. Or you always clean up my stuff. Or, you know, most kids are not going to acknowledge this, but it would be like you get feedback and that someone else is praising you or giving you some self-worth for doing something above and beyond or for like bending over backward for them. And it... It's basically a recognition from others to help feed that insecurity. So the idea is like, if I don't please others, I'm going to worry about those other people not wanting to be my friend or not my kids being mad at me or my kids like disconnecting or my partner, you know, not spending time with me or thinking I'm valuable, right? So it's in an effort to be valued by others and really the worry is that they would be dismissed or rejected. Typically also people pleasers will avoid conflict. I don't want to argue about it. I don't want to cause a problem, which is like what I mentioned at the beginning of this episode about the show that I watched. You know, I don't want to cause conflict. So it will be anything to avoid that. And really keeping others happy is the goal here. If they're happy, I'm happy. And oftentimes the peacemaker in this situation. I want everybody here to feel happy, to feel valued, but at the same time, the person, that people pleaser is not necessarily valued or happy themselves. It's like the other people, as long as they're happy, it's okay. And typically there's a tendency to spend a lot of time worrying about what other people think about them. So they're not necessarily people pleasing out of love, they're doing it out of fear. That's the big difference between just being nice, being helpful, and people-pleasing to a point where it's detrimental is it's done from that inner fear of rejection or of not belonging or of 
disappointing someone. So it's like this fear of something happening with another person if I don't do these things. So let me talk a little bit about why people please. People, people please. I told you it was going to be hard to say. Like I mentioned before, it all comes from a fear of rejection or failure. And oftentimes this can be formed in early relationships with a caregiver or a parent whose love they felt was unconditional or sorry, conditional. So the love was conditional. They may have had to earn their parents' love or respect or affection by behaving this way. And possibly this parent was emotionally unavailable or, you know, they weren't really sure who they were going to get. So like I said, it was conditional and maybe a little bit volatile and unpredictable. And like I said before, in general, more women than men tend to be this way because they're the caretakers, they're the nurturers, and they're conditioned to be more passive. They don't want to be thought of as, quote, difficult. And the problem here is that as a people pleaser, you're tending to the needs of other people more than your own. And of course, as you know, this can really impact your quality of life, but it can also impact the quality of your relationships. And so here's where I'm going to talk a little bit about the parenting aspect of it, because that's why you're here, right? This is a parenting podcast. So if you tend to be a people pleaser and that's spreading into your relationship and your interactions with your teens, it can impact, or one of the big things is that it could, you might feel resentment toward them. I'm doing all of these things for them. They never say thank you or they take advantage of me. So the resentment can build and that's going to impact how you interact with them, how you see them, your energy when you're around them. And also those who have had parents who bend over backwards and do everything for them tend to be less resilient because they're just used to getting things their, their way, the way they like it. And so they're not used to, oh gosh, wait, somebody didn't do this for me or, oh wait, this is hard work. I'm not used to doing hard work. I'm not used to hearing no. I'm not used to feeling like uh, I can't do something. So in general, they're going to be a little less resilient. And I know you're here because you want your teenager to be confident and resilient. And if anything, hear me on this. By being a people pleaser, you're creating somebody who is not going to be as confident and not as resilient. So you can love them, but that doesn't mean you need to do everything for them. And I know you don't really want to. So how do you stop being a people pleaser? I'm going to list a few things that could be helpful here. And really, like I mentioned, this is tough because a lot of the times people pleasers, people please, I told you, (laughs) it's like like a tongue twister. People pleasers don't have the awareness that they're even doing it. But if you've been listening to this, you may know it, you may recognize it, you may be aware from that list I shared with you, you may recognize, you know, I do have some tendencies there. If you are aware, here are some things that you can do. Number one is to get to know yourself. Know what your values are and let those lead the way when it comes to knowing when to say yes, when to say no, when to participate, when to help, when to not, so that you are leaning into what's most important to you versus what's important to other people. Get to know yourself, whether it's through journaling or some type of thought work, talking with someone about this people-pleasing tendency and have compassion for yourself. Have compassion for that part of you that feels unwanted and was sent the message at some point that in order to be valuable, you must give more than you take. You must accommodate above and beyond to the point where it could be detrimental to you or more work for you. Have some compassion for that part of you, that child in you or that time when you felt that that was the only way you could receive love. 
And just think too about why you want to help other people or why you want to, to say yes. And when will you say yes? So it's, there's some reflection that can happen here and it's going to be gradual. It's not going to be something that just all of a sudden, oh, look at me. I stopped people pleasing. I know it was something for me that took a lot of time. I would say at least 10 years. It was a transition to where I recognized at one point I was working with a coach and I recognized that my nurturing, my value to be a nurturer and a caretaker was taking over to the point where I was burnt out and I couldn't give anymore because I was so anxious and so tired and resentful at the same time. And that was probably close to 10 years ago. And now here I am, (laughs) completely reformed. No, not completely reformed, but I'm pretty darn close. And I feel so much better about it too. But like I said, it, it took time. The second thing to do is to really learn how to set boundaries. And people hear boundaries, it's a word that's tossed around all of the time. But to effectively set boundaries, you need to be clear in your mind what you are and are not okay with. And sometimes the boundary is something that you give to someone else, but sometimes the boundary is something that you know just inside yourself. You know how much time you're willing to give. You know how much energy you're willing to give. You know what you're okay with saying yes to and what you're not okay with. So it can often be an internal boundary that you're really looking at here versus telling somebody, stop asking me to do these things for you because that's dependent upon them. But when you have the boundary to yourself, you're accountable to yourself. So just being clear on what you, what you are willing to do, what you are not willing to do. And that goes back to your values as well. Knowing when to say yes and when to say no, and it's constantly going to change. You may say yes and regret it, You may say no and regret it and think, you know what, next time I'm going to adjust. The third thing is to just stop over apologizing. I like to say, I save my apologies for things when I am genuinely sorry, like I have done something and I've done something wrong and I want to tell the person I'm sorry for it. But using sorry when you bump into somebody at Starbucks or when you said something over someone else just practicing not saying sorry all of the time or say when you're late, thank you for your patience. Thank you for understanding, right? Oop, it looks like it's your turn. You're not saying I'm sorry unless you really mean it. So check your over apologizing. And number four is to try to get to the root of why you people please. That's where it's all created. So if you're able to dig in, find that source, or even just the idea, the fear that it's growing from, addressing that, challenging it, and then turning it around, that can do wonders for how it feels to say no and how easily it will be for you to set boundaries. And then the fifth thing is just to, like I mentioned before, have compassion for yourself through this process. Just know that it's going to take time and know that really, truly what you're wanting, especially people pleasing in your relationship with your teen is to have firm boundaries with love and compassion to where it feels good to be able to have a strong stance on something. So yes, saying no, it's going to be uncomfortable. As a parent myself, I have a hard time saying no. You know, my, my kids are good kids, but when it's something that I truly believe that I do not want or I'm, I, I won't allow, I say no. And even if I believe in it strongly, it's hard for me. But I sit in that discomfort because I know that it's important to me to say no. And that discomfort will pass and it will for you too. So here to end this off, I'm going to give you six questions to ask yourself when you are wanting to make a decision as to whether you want to say yes or no to something, whether it be your teen, some going out with people, somebody asking you for help with something, here's just like a filter you can run that through to help you come to a decision about whether you'll say yes or no. Question one is, what does it give me? And this is the positives. 
What are the positives that I will get from this? Okay, and that can be hard, especially if you're a people pleaser to think, what does it give me? That feels selfish. No, that's filter number one. What do I have to gain here? Because the more you have to gain, the more you have to give. So if you're able to say no and then have more energy for something else, like time with your family or time to care for your health, that's a benefit for you that will eventually benefit other people that you're around. So what does it give me? And that's the positives. Question number two, what does this take from me? And these are the negatives. Could it be taking your time? Could it be taking your energy, your resources, your money, right? What is the negatives? What is it taking from me? Number three is who benefits? In this situation, it could be you, the other person, several people. Thinking of that can help you sort through your yes and no. Number four is who pays the price? So who in this scenario is, be, is going to be paying the price or having a, a negative impact? Number five, the question is, is it your responsibility? So this is a small story, but my daughter, sometimes we have the, these box elder bugs that come around in September and October and they're all over the place. And they, their main goal in life is to get into your house. And so of course they're going to get into our house and they get into my daughter's room because she just happens to be on the sunniest side of the house and she doesn't like cleaning them up. I was in the middle of something and she asked me if I could come and clean up the spiders in her room and I said no. And it was uncomfortable as heck for me to say no because I didn't have like a real firm reason. Like I just had something else I needed to do and I said no and it was uncomfortable. And lo and behold, she went and took care of it herself. (laughs) It worked out. Was it my responsibility? No, it wasn't my responsibility. I didn't want to do it. And so I said, no. So that's question number five. Is it your responsibility? And number six, is it important? In the situation that you're looking at, is this something that's important? And this is where your values can come into. So there you have it. The six questions to ask yourself. And always know that you as a parent are the nurturer and the caretaker. And you're here because you want to have a better relationship with your teenager. But most of the time, in order for that to happen... It takes a little work and reflection and you getting to know yourself. And that's what this podcast is all about. Stop your people pleasing and start giving and loving yourself and your family with even more vigor. So if you find that you're struggling with people pleasing or you want to have a better relationship with your teenager, schedule a consultation with me. It's a free conversation. We'll just be talking about what's going on with you, what's going on with your teenager, what you're struggling with what you'd like support with, and I will share with you exactly how I would work with you step-by-step to help overcome these things so you can have more peace and harmony in your home and in your life. The link to schedule is in the notes below, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. If you liked this episode, I'd like to invite you to join Raising Happy Teens, my free online community for parents of teenagers, where every week I host Ask a Coach. You bring your parenting questions, and I provide expert advice and coaching. Click the link in the show notes to join today. I'll see you inside.